we are in alpha 17 and we are looking in uh, um, seven days to die of how to make the electrical items here and um, we've gone through some of the basic stuff and let's go at a bit of more of the advanced things so now let's look at the spotlight let's look at the speaker let's look at the pressure plates and um, timer relay motion sensor and the tripwire and these are higher tier items so let's craft them we're on the workbench again and uh, again just to, to click here and if, if you're outside and let's say here and your normal when you do spotlight it will show up but you can craft it obviously because it shows that it requires uh, the workbench to craft so for this one spotlight you put in one headlight so that's, at least it's good that you need that for the lamps I, I wish you needed that for the normal simple lights as well but anyway you need the electrical march duct tape and iron so uh, let's craft one of these ones Let's also look at the speaker, and the speaker is something that some people find really annoying. It can actually be really useful too. Simple to make, just a forged iron or electrical parts. We have the pressure trigger plates. Now these don't work the same way, it's just the size. So you see this one is 1022, this one is 586. So you know, the, the price is com fairly comparable. Of course, this is a little bit cheaper if you want to have a wide cord or something. I'm gonna make the basic one simply because save some space. Let's make the timer relay. And this one has a slightly different functionality from the normal relay, which makes it actually quite useful at times. And we have the motion sensor and simple again, forged iron, some parts. Let's craft that one. And we have the trip wire. And this one is sort of like a switch, which is actually cheap to make because it's just wooden electrical parts. And you need two of them. Oops, let's make two. Okay, so we're gonna get all these ones ready. Okay, we have everything set up now. So, well, actually not set up. We have everything crafted. So let me start pl placing it down. And uh, this one can be fairly useful. Let's say, where we wouldn't put this one? Let's put it here. All right, put it here. That one is down now. So this is the spotlight. E to interact and, well, you can't very do very much because there's no power. Let's uh, put down the speaker. Put down the speaker here, out of the way. We have the timer relay. Let's put that down here. And then we have some more things as well. We have the trip wire. Let's do that one there. Actually, sorry, the trigger plate. We have the trip wire. Let's put that here. And then we have the motion sensor. So we can get that one next to there, okay. So these are some of the more advanced electrical items here. Normally when you just start off, just having lights and everything is pretty pretty easy, but then you obviously want to branch out to have more advanced things as well that you can craft. Now, how do you hook it up? Well, let's start with, let's see here. Um, let's start with the spotlight because that one is fairly straightforward. So we connect that one, let's flip that one. That gives us, let's keep that on and then we can switch this one. And I'm going to switch off these ones. Okay. You see, you have the spotlight. And let me make it a little bit darker. Let's pretend that it's really nighttime here. Okay, and let me bring down my, I think my gamma might be up a bit yet. Okay. So this is the spotlight, which is uh, gives a fair cone of, uh, of light compared to you take one of these. This one has sort of a very uh, localized light. And then you turn on the spotlight and it gives a nice forward cone of light here. Now this one, obviously you need to have power and it takes five watt, just like a normal uh, normal light. But if you hold E to interact and you go into the aim, you see here you can, okay, so how do I get into it? So now is the, how you get the camera preview. You left click here and you can, shift it within the the 180 degree arc so let me put it here and then i escape out escape out again and you see now it's shining downwards let me shine it a little bit upwards actually like, like this so you see now it's actually it's illuminating most of my little base here and uh quite nice actually i, I like the spotlights if you want to light up larger areas the spotlight is definitely better than normal normal light of course it takes more space and it's a bit uglier 
but it works quite well. Now, we also have, let's go for the speaker. And it's going to be, um, okay, let's not go for the speaker because that was a bit more troublesome. Let's go for the trigger plate. So the trigger plate is one way. I mean, effectively, it's like a switch, except you step on it. So let's connect this one to the trigger plate. And then you connect this one to the spotlight. Oh, I missed this one to the spotlight. Come on. Yes. Okay. So now, obviously, it's dark. Everything is on. It has This one has power. This one does not. You see it's grayed out. I step on it. You hear that clunk. And the light goes on. So it's very straightforward. You can use that you know, when you're going into your base, but probably not. You can. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use it to open hatches and doors. That would be really awesome. But it's good for other reasons, such as uh, triggering traps. That's really what people usually make trigger plates on, because stepping on this one, having light, and then you step off and it's dark again, you know, it doesn't really help. So uh, it's fairly straightforward that you get on, you get off. Now, what about the trip wire? So let's connect the trip wire. You go from the power over to the initial trip wire. Then you go from that trip wire across to the other one. And from this one, you see that it has a slightly different, uh, this purple one, or pink one. And then you go from that one to the light. So what this one obviously means is that you trip it and you hear the and it goes on. So it works very similar to the trigger plate, except it can cover a larger area. Now these ones are made of wood, so they're fairly fragile. You see, they can be destroyed fairly easily. So you want to, you know, if you have them out and about, you want to protect them with other blocks around because you can, and I can show that actually, you can have a block in between. So you can have, so when something walks in between, it triggers and they are protected from anything because there are blocks in between. There are a couple of extra functions you can um, access. And let's see if I can, it's this one. The, and this will cause I bashed it. You see the first one has no interact. The second one has interact. So if I hold E to interact and you have options. And here you can decide what kind of power options, meaning that would you want that to be delay from it's being triggered? And how long do you want the power duration to be? Let's say you want to have 10 seconds. You want it to trigger after two seconds. And then you want the power delay, well, power duration to be 10. So if I get on here, now it turns on. So if I just walk past, it'll take two seconds, it'll turn on and it'll be on for 10 seconds. And it's gonna go off. Hopefully, yeah, now it went off and I go on again. It's gonna be delay two seconds and then it turns on. So that's pretty useful. And actually you can do the same thing with the trigger plates. So you can have it say delay one second or zero seconds and then you can have it basically for 60 minutes, power duration, etc. So you can do that assuming you want to have it for specific timing or you want to have it always. Um, always might not be that useful because then you still have to manually turn off, but it would work. Normally when you use it for traps, for instance, you put it for instance that it's going to be firing for let's say five seconds and then it'll turn off, which means that a zombie walks past the traps activate for five, 10 seconds or something, and then presumably the zombie is dead and the traps turns off because the, the time runs out. But of course you can do that however you want to. Okay, so next item, and let's uh, turn this on. Next item, and let me go back to a little bit of uh, daytime here. So we have a little bit of light at least. I can switch this off. Now we have the electric timer relay, and that's a really interesting one. So I switch this one on, I take the relay, go relay to the light. And you hold E, well, hit E to interact, or you hold E and then you get up this one, the usual options one. And you can see what's the start time. So let's say I wanna start this one at, uh, let's say 10 p.m., which is when nighttime falls. And I wanted to finish at 4 a.m. Okay, 4 a.m. Which means that it's gonna have, see, zero draw, and this one is off because the time is now 10.15, but daytime. So if I go and put that as, let me see if I can put that as nighttime. 
right before. A little bit tricky. Come on, give me. Okay. So now it's just uh, five minutes uh, in game time. Four, three, and when it hits 2200 hours, which is the night time, the light should go on. Hopefully. And the light did not go on. Oh, because I forgot to switch on. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Let's go back one. Okay, come on. That was a small mission. Okay, so now we are at 2156, 57, 58, 59, almost. And it should turn on. Yes. So now, because the relay is from 22 to 4, which means that it's actually useful for your bases because you can set them to have light, for instance, only at nighttime. Uh, you can, for instance, have uh, motion sensors that are only active during the nighttime, stuff like that, depending on how you want to do it. So traps could only be active at a certain hours, depending on how you want to uh, prime your defenses. Let's go back to daytime. Okay. So that can be pretty, fairly useful. And see, the time now is 9, so actually I can, if I extend that one to 10, it'll turn on because now it's 9.30, well, 9.28, which is before 10. But what about the last two things? So we are going to connect. And let's turn this off again. We're going to now look at the motion sensor and the speaker. Now, the motion sensor is fairly interesting. Let's connect that one to here to the generator. So connect it directly here. Of course, you can connect it through wireless relays and stuff like that. Um, it has the same basic power delay. If you want to delay it or you want to have a longer duration, you can do that like many of these things. It also has a camera preview, meaning that you can decide where it scans. And again, it's the usual uh, 180 arc up and down. Let's put it here. And it has one extra thing here. It has this targeting. You can target, so this now is grayed out, the targeting nothing. You can target self, allies, strangers, and zombies. Normally you trigger on zombies, but it, you know, it's up to you if you want to have it connected to traps that kill yourself or your friends. And let's escape out. And now because it sees me and I put self, and if I put it like here to the lamp, okay, now because it sees me, then it's on. And if I go out of its arc, and you can see that here. The arc is not necessarily what you see here, unfortunately. You see, I mean, I can sort of see. If I look here, obviously I saw myself. But uh, it's still not triggering because it's slightly smaller. And if I go down here, it'll go like, yep, it's I see you. I see myself. And it turns off and on. So this one is really useful for having say uh, inside your inside your bases for turning on lights or some electrical items or you can do something slightly differently and let me do this let's say you connect it outside to your traps or you connect it to a speaker now the speaker is interesting because there's no options there but if something triggers it such as a trigger plate or trigger a uh, tripwire you have an alarm system so you can imagine you're having that outside of your base and you have it to the motion sensor to trigger on, say, the zombies. As soon as the zombie steps into view, the alarm goes on. And why would you want to have that? Well, you, let's say you want to check when there's wandering horse coming by. Maybe there are just stray zombies that come by that you want to kill because you don't want to have them close by. If they're close by, they might hear you and they might come to beat on your walls. Right, so this is really, really useful, and I like this. I, I, I find the the sound a little bit annoying, and I wish they gave us other options for what the alarm sound is going to be. I mean, you could imagine that you had a, like instead of a picking up just now, that you had an options just like you have for, for these ones. So you can like select between, let's say, five different types of, of uh, alarm sounds, and that would be you know, and maybe even the volume, maybe up and down the volume because you know, it's it's, it's fairly loud and annoying. Most people uh, actually don't like the sound. It you know definitely cuts through, but uh, I wish you could fine tune that. So this is the basic and the advanced ones. Now there are okay. I'm gonna. I I I I let's let's clear this one for now. Okay, so let's clear this one. Now we have the additional ones, and these are the ones that includes the solar bank, and I'll do that one, and the 
battery bank did I make no I didn't make any batteries let's make a battery bank as well and let's cheat it one in because I don't want to wait for a minute I don't want to make people bored and then we have the battery so let's turn off our okay so we turn this off okay let's look at this so let's start with the solar bank here and let's place this down and uh, remember you have to buy it you can craft it you have to buy it and possibly dilute it you hit e and now you have to put in the solar cell so just having the solar bank doesn't work it's sort of like a generator so you need the solar cell as well it has a potential of 30 watt per solar cell so that gives you 180 let's turn on and listen to that really annoying sound i don't know why a solar bank has that sound because you imagine in real life you have this on your rooftop and you have to listen to the sound the whole time. Anyway, it, you know, it's, it, I think they should remove or lessen the sound of this one because it's actually fairly annoying. It's like, the, I mean, in a generator I can understand because it's a generator that is running, but a solar bank, shouldn't that be quiet? I mean, it shouldn't be so noisy. Anyway, let's connect it to, and of course I can go into open, switch on and off and take it, but let's right click and connect it to the light. And you see the light turns on and now this one is strong five makes sense right if you then turn to nighttime it goes off because there's no light obviously so if you go back to daytime it will will work and everything turns on and of course uh, why would you want to power your lights when there's sun and it's already bright well of course you wouldn't um, you could power some traps but then they would only be functioning when there's sun out. And of course, most zombies move faster and um, there are more of them at night. So, um, especially the blood, blood moon hordes. So just having the solar bank is not sufficient. But this is where the battery bank really shines. So let's put down one of these ones and we hold E to interact and we can go into open, close, whatever, or you just hit E to get into here. And this is sort of like a generator as well, except it's a fairly temporary because you have this one and then you turn on. And then let me connect the battery bank with the light. And you'll see flickered, but now it's on. And now it's actually slowly, slowly draining the power of the battery. I don't think you'll, it'll take a while before it actually drains because it has a fair bit of, I mean, it, one of the batteries can, this one can output 45 watt. I think it's quality based, I think 50 per each maybe. But it's gonna take a fair while to drain it down. And, uh, so you could just connect it like this, but eventually it will drain all the way down and then you have no more. And that's, of course, not what you want. But together with the solar bank, that's really where it shines because you connect the solar bank to the battery. Well, the battery bank. So now, because there's light out here, you see it's not drawing any power from the battery and actually it's actually being charged. And the light is still on. That's really cool. But this one is strong five. So the power is going from the solar bank through the battery bank, charging it, and then to the light. And why is this useful? Well, let's turn off the light. It's now dark. The solar bank is not working. You can Well, you can hear, or you can't hear it. But the light is still on. And now it's back to battery power. See how useful that is? So the battery bank and the solar power really shine working together because it means that you sort of have that as a buffer. And of course, if you have too much of, <laughs> if you don't have enough batteries and you have too much stuff on it, it means it's not gonna last all throughout the night. So you have to fine tune between um, at which hours this one is working and which hours is not. Um, because you obviously want to make sure that during the daytime hours, it is charging up the battery bank full. And during nighttime, it doesn't drain it down completely because then things stop working. But it means that you can have sort of a perpetual energy without using the generators. And that's why solar banks as a late game is really, really useful because you don't need to have that really annoying thing where you have to go and uh, refuel it all the time. This one has taken just a few of them, but it, you know, it's just a few minutes of testing. So eventually it's going to run down. 1,000 is actually not huge. But the solar bank with the battery power will ra last perpetually with, of course, the caveat that it needs light in order to charge up. So you have to balance that. See how useful this is? And, oh, this is, it was up to 10 momentarily, maybe because it was flicking on and off. Okay, that's weird. 
you guys saw it, right? It's recorded. So I think something went wrong momentarily where we recalculated and found the spotlight when it was all already a spotlight and decided that was 10 instead of 5. But um, so you see, this is how your electricity items work. And you can connect them. Of course, you can connect this one to this one and then this one to, let's say, the trigger plate and then the trigger plate to the light goes off. Step on it. It goes on. Right. So you can you can do whatever you want to. Oh. Oh yeah, because I put this as always, sorry. Let's do triggered. On, off, on, off. So it's, it's really useful and to create these uh, kind of circuits. And uh, we are, a lot of these trigger things um, work best when you connect them with different traps. And we're gonna go through that in a future episode. This is just to go through the basic and advanced electricity so you get an idea of how to actually do that. And keep in mind, the perks again is intellect, and you have the advanced engineering for most of them and you have the science for the battery banks and then you go and buy the solar bank and the solar cells at the traders easy right so let me know in the comments of how you use the electrical well, electrical items and uh, hopefully in one of the updates in alpha 17 we do get more electrical items i'm not sure whether we will but um, if not, then Alpha 18, because I think it's really cool, you know, connecting them to hatches, drawbridges, I think that would really extend the use of them. But I'll catch you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.